there's a lily in the valley bright as the morning sun there is a lily in the valley Lord bright as the morning sun there is a lily woo, in the valley Lord bright as the morning sun Somebody found joy in the valley, bright as the morning sun. Oh, joy in the valley, Lord, bright as the morning sun. Somebody found joy, Lord, in the valley, bright as the morning sun. in the valley it seemed like you can't even say a word when you don't know how things gonna work out you don't even have the words to pray <laughs> but the Holy Ghost Mother's groanings on the inside. Saying everything that you need to say. meditate on God's goodness. Amen. Just meditate on his goodness. Let your glory fill this house. Let your glory fill this house. Jesus, you are welcome. Let your glory fill this house. Let's talk about your house. Let your glory feel this house. Let your glory feel this house. Jesus, you are welcome. Let your glory feel this house. Let your peace 
this house let your peace fill this house Jesus you are welcome let your peace fill this house let your love fill this house let your love fill this house Jesus you are well come let your love fill this house Father God we thank you Lord as we go get ready to go into this Bible study tonight God we praise you oh God for just keeping us all the day long, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for keeping us from all hurt, harm, and danger, oh God. Father, while some are just having woke up this morning, but Jesus, you still woke us up this morning. God, and we want to say thank you, God. Thank you for just waking us up, Jesus. Thank you for not forgetting about us, oh God. Lord, thank you for keeping the blood running warm in our veins, Jesus. God, thank you, oh God, for the activity of our limbs. God, we just want to say thank you, Jesus. God, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. God, you are so worthy, oh God, to be praised. Lord, your love never fails. God, your promises never fail. God, your goodness never fails, Jesus. That's why we've come to say thank you, oh God. We've come to lift up your name, Jesus. God, lower us down, God, in the basket of your word, Jesus. Lord, that we might understand, oh God, all those things that you have in store for those that love you, God. Lord, you said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these other things will be added. God, we're seeking your face tonight. Lord, help us, oh God, to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God, and we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We magnify you. God, you're so worthy, and we just love your name, Jesus. Jesus, you're so good to us, God, and we thank you. Lord, continue to bless those that are sick among us, oh God. Lord, those that may be shut in, God. Lord, you are a healer and a way maker, Jesus. Bless those that are going back to school, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let Put your angels of protection around them, God. We thank you, Jesus. Bless those that are going back to work. God, we thank you, oh God, for allowing them, oh God, to go back. But God, we ask you right now, God, to cover them, Lord. Cover them from the crown of their heads, Jesus, to the sole of their feet. God, and we thank you, Lord. Don't let them go back the same, oh God. But Lord, this time, God, let them go back with a greater witness. God, let them go back with a greater testimony. Let them grow back with a greater example of your mercy and your love. God, and we thank you, God. We thank you for all that you're doing. Keep us, Father, and we shall be kept in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we thank you today. We thank God for you being here today and sharing in this Bible study. Amen. I'm excited up here and, and just um, and appreciating having the time to just be in worship. Amen. The whole praise team is not here and we don't have all the support and the real good singers. But how many of you know that God said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord? So that's what I'm up here doing. You know, some of us, we praise God in the shower. We praise God in our car and we get in front of folk or we don't want to say something. I'm going to tell you something. When praises go up, blessings come down. I don't care how many people see me praising because they also going to watch the blessings come down. Amen. So we thank God so much for our, uh, you joining us today for our Bible study. Amen. And we're going to go ahead and prep to get into the word tonight. And I'm going to ask if we go ahead and move over and get me a microphone that I can stand and get the word. We're waiting on our teacher today to get here, uh, Sister Keela. Uh, thank God uh, the Lord has given her uh, some employment that has her working a little late tonight. We were hoping she would be here. But how many of you know the Bible says, be ye also ready? 
Amen. Be ye also ready. So we want to bless you with a word tonight. Amen. We want to bless you with a word tonight. Amen. Let's give the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tonight, we're going to get right into the word of God tonight and share this word from the book of Acts. The book of Acts. If you have your Bibles tonight, go with me to the book of Acts. The book of Acts. This is, we're going to begin in the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. We're going to talk about this. This is a very familiar passage of scripture when uh, before Apostle Paul was the Apostle Paul that we know that helped to write most of the New Testament, that helped to uh, plant most of the New Testament churches. Uh, but before he was Apostle Paul, he was Saul and he was not a friend of God. So we want to go into that scripture and just share that with you. But if you have your books, it says Acts the ninth chapter, the first verse reads as follows. Now Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for, his, for letters from him to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any belonging to the way, both men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. So let me get you caught up real quick. Here is Saul. Saul is going around. He's trying to climb the ranks of those that are in the Judaic of faith, uh, believing in the Old Testament, still waiting on the Messiah, still in denial that Jesus is the Messiah. He wants to now show his determination to get rid of this sect of believers, disciples that follow Jesus, and they call that the way. Those folks following Jesus, they called them, that was the way. So here, Saul was going to get letters from the governing authorities to give him the ability to walk right into the synagogues, right, walk right into the temple, to walk right into the church and just take men and women and imprison them and some were even killed. How many know the devil doesn't have any respect for your Christianity. The devil doesn't have any respect for the church. And I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes as the church is under attack, sometimes the governing authorities are the very ones that are sanctioning the attacks. Just recently discovered in California uh, that there are churches that are now being fined for, not, for, for having services inside the church. They can't sing and they're being fined and, and the, the governor has made this a declaration. Let me tell you something. The government doesn't necessarily believe in Jesus, but as the church is under attack, we still understand who our real enemy is. It's not the government. Uh-oh. It's not the government. Our enemy is not the government. Even though the government appears to be imposing so many things that seem to be coming against the church, it's not the government. See, Ephesians, I believe it's 6 and 12, says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Uh -uh, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Our fight is not with flesh and blood, but it's against powers and wickedness in high places. And that's what, so this is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. Brothers have contacted me and told me we talked about this. And I said, you know what? Maybe it's God. Maybe it's God getting us to get outside of these four walls. Maybe it's God wanting us to knock on some doors. Maybe it's God wanting us to get out of our comfort zone and stop making it all about trying to have a good Sunday school class. And now that we can't be inside the church like we want to, maybe this would encourage us to go outside and start evangelizing and telling folk about Jesus. And as I thought about it, I said, well, Lord, why don't we do that? Why, why don't we do that as much as we should? And I think sometimes because if I go knock on a door and tell somebody about Jesus and they get saved, but they don't come to my church and they don't become a member of my church, it seemed like I ain't getting no credit. Uh-oh. It seemed like I ain't getting no credit because when people judge the church, they always ask what? how many members you have. So we've gotten away from just going and spreading the gospel, but we're now not trying to just evangelize. We're busy trying to congregationalize because we're trying to build a bigger and better church. But how many of you know the church is outside these walls? 
So if Saul, representing those that are against the church, was bold enough and crass enough to get authorization to come inside the church to, to fulfill the devil's agenda, shouldn't the saints of God be willing to go outside the church to fulfill kingdom agenda? Amen. I thank God for causing us to have to go out. Amen. So Saul was going into the temple with the letter to on his way to go to Jerusalem. And as he was traveling, verse 3 says, it happens that he was approaching Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. Uh-oh. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Mm. Sometimes we're trying to take this thing personal and we're trying to make it against us and against uh, a particular political party or a particular race. But I'm going to tell you something. This ain't about us. This is about Satan. This is about a warfare that's been going on from the beginning of time. And Satan wants to, he knows his time is short-lived. He knows his time is up. And how many of you know misery don't like, misery loves company. Satan is trying to take as many people as he can with us. And you know what? What's, fight, what's failing the saints of God most of all is a lack of focus. Satan got me looking at the Republicans. Got me looking at the Democrats. Got me looking at the white folks. Got me looking at the black folks. When in actuality, Satan is trying to cause me to miss out on knowing Jesus and having a relationship with Jesus because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. It ain't saying you're going to get to heaven if you're a Democrat or you're going to get to heaven if you're a Republican. You have to know Jesus. So Satan is trying to get our focus off of Jesus. Saul goes and he meets Jesus on the way. How many folk petitioned for Saul to get right with God? How many folk declared and, and said they, they, they marched and protest to make sure Saul, the church didn't come out to protest to make sure Saul got right with God? The Bible said that a light shined from heaven <laughs> and not Saul on the ground. And as you read the story, Saul, it blinded him. So that's the answer right there. We've got to pray that God will shine his light on those in authority. We have to pray that God will shine his light on those that are against the will of God, against the church. We got to pray God shines his light on those supervisors that don't want to give you Bible study night off or those supervisors that want to make you work on Sunday. Listen, ain't no need of petitioning or crying. All you got to do is get on your knees and pray that God will shine his light on them. There's nothing more powerful than the light of God. Nothing more powerful than the light of God. That means you have to open your mouth. You have to open up your mouth and pray, Lord, I need you to do this. Lord, I need you to do this, God. Not for selfish reasons, God. I need you to do this because, Lord, only you can do it. I'm not going back to work in my own power. I'm not sending my kids to school in my own power, God. But I'm going in your power, God. Please, Lord Jesus, go before me, Lord. Make the crooked path straight. Mm, there's power in prayer. We've been talking about prayer all week long. We've seen God deliver folk. We're seeing God bring folk through lung transplants. We're seeing God bring people through dialysis. We're seeing God uh, reclaim jobs. We're seeing that prayer makes a difference. Well, you know what? Why not pray for every area of your life? Why not pray for everything that concerns you? Because the Lord said, I will perfect those things that concern you. He also says all things will work together for the good of them that love the Lord. All things. Nothing too small for God. Nothing's too large for God. Take it to him in prayer.